this is the Provoke Prawn, and these are the Leon Lee Unifan AL120 V2s. And in this video, I'm going to be wiring these fans up and showing you the different connection options and how to set them up and the features and highlights of them. And I'm going to do a video separately to compare them with the original AL120s, which you can see here if you look very carefully, because these have some very subtle changes and some very nice ones. And so I'm going to talk to you about the individual setup process going through from a single fan all the way up to nine fans and the different ways that you can do it, the logic of it, the interlocking mechanisms, the wiring with the single fan and more. So I think it's important to know all these things and how it works. So in a single pack, you have seen here, you get the fan itself. You have a cable which splits into two connectors and some screws. Now it's worth noting that Lian Lee mentions that you need to make sure you're using the screws that are included with these because these are thicker fans than your average fans. So they are designed to give a better performance and airflow than the previous version, which is one of the highlights. And then the other thing you'll note is that in the single box, you essentially have two cables. The white cable that you can see on the right hand side here plugs into this connector on one side of the fan and it's quite flush with the body of the fan. And this is intentional because it means that you can use these on radiators and without much hassle. It just slips into place and then clicks into there. And then you have two cables that come out of that that you can then use to connect to your computer in various different ways. And this is a fairly straightforward setup with a single fan. And I will say it's actually worth having an individual fan. I've done a video recently, for example, on whether you can use these sorts of fans on a radiator. And if you've got this split setup, it's actually very handy for installing these sorts of fans on a radiator because it means that you can plug the fan power connector into the CPU fan header on your motherboard and then get good cooling on the radiator fans and use it that way. And then the RGB cable goes separately to an RGB header or an RGB controller. More on that in a minute. But you can see that you essentially have two cables coming out of this single fan that then plug in in some way or other. Two different things depending on what you're doing. And this becomes useful in various different ways as well. Now as standard, the one cable goes to the fan power and the other one is for RGB. This RGB cable that you can see me using here has a special adapter that you can plug in and connect to it. And that then turns it into a 5 volt RGB cable. And that will then connect up to the 5 volt 3 pin RGB cable on your motherboard. And I'll show you that in a second. So the logic here is fairly straightforward. And I'm doing this outside the case so that you can see it nice and easily. But you plug in the power cable into the chassis fan connector on your motherboard or system fan header. And then the RGB cable uses that adapter and connects up to the three pin five volt RGB header. Don't try to use the 12 volt, which is usually a four pin connector because that won't work. And also it could cause problems if you tried. You can see a close up look at what that looks like here, but you will see there's a three pin one and then there's a five pin one, which is the white one further over. You have to be very careful with these as well because it's really easy to bend the pins and the more observant viewer will notice that I have actually managed to do that on one of these motherboards which is obviously not ideal. You can see the close up look at the chassis fan connectors. You want to try and connect that power cable to one of those connectors. And if possible, use a PWM controllable one. You can adjust that so it has PWM control in the motherboard software in your BIOS. And then you can adjust the fan speed from your motherboard software and from the BIOS settings as well. So you have customization options there. And then obviously with the RGB connection as standard to your motherboard, you then control the RGB lighting with your motherboard software for whatever motherboard you're using, whatever software you're using will vary, obviously. But that's the fairly straightforward setup logic of a single fan. Now these are obviously interlocking fans. That's why they're uni fans. They basically clip together. You'll find there are clips on either side. These will slot into place. And then you can just click those together really easily. So you now see that you've got two fans. Make sure they're facing the right direction because it is actually possible to put them in the wrong way around and put one face in the other way, although they won't lock all the way in if you do do that. Essentially, we're making sure that the connectors on each side line up. So you've got those gold contacts that will line up on there. You push that into place then push them in with the locking mechanisms. Another interesting point of note here is those little locking bits that stick out can actually be removed as well. And I'll show you that in a second. And that means that you can make it a much cleaner setup if you're mounting these on a radiator or something else. Now you can actually connect up to four of these fans 
and connect them up to control box that I'll show you in a minute. So you can potentially do that. Now, in most instances, you'll probably not be doing that. You usually have about three in sequence or maybe two, but it is possible to connect them up in various different ways. So you can have groups of these fans and doing this also means you still only have that one cable one cable with two connections on it for four fans instead of what you would usually have with a lot of other RGB fans, which is two cables per fan. And this is why Lian Lee fans are the best available, in my opinion, because it makes life a lot easier in terms of cable management and powering them. We've connected up four fans, and now we're trying to run it with one cable, which is then the power and the RGB connector. Now, chances are that your motherboard probably won't support this many fans on one single header. That's worth bearing that in mind. I'd check your motherboard manual to find out how much voltage you can put out from that, where well, you'll probably find that you shouldn't run four fans on it. Probably get away with three maximum, I'd say. And so really you don't want to run more than that. But you will see that you can remove those clips, as I said, they just twist and come off. So you've got a much cleaner finish on either end now because the cables are really flush and the design then enables you to make sure that doesn't interfere with anything when you're installing it in your case. So as I said earlier, you're probably more likely to use groups of three. So you'll find three fans, for example, on a 360 mil radiator or three fans on the front of a case for intake, for example. So you could end up with this setup where you've got two groups of three with those two different connectors on them. So you've got four cables to deal with, two RGB and two power. Now, this really depends on the motherboard you're using, but you can see on this motherboard that I'm using, for example, that I have a 5 volt RGB head on the bottom left, and I also have one on the top right. So it is actually theoretically possible to connect up six fans like this with this motherboard and still be able to power them and have the RGB connections running from this motherboard and sorting it all out like that. You may find that with cheaper, lesser motherboards that you only have one RGB connector and then obviously you've got a problem. That's the point where you need to buy a triple pack and I'll show you why in a minute. But you might find you have more RGB headers and then theoretically obviously you could have another group of three fans on there potentially. And that means you could stick to buying single fans. But I think it's worth seeing the logic of how all of this works and the complexity of it. Obviously also you're running a lot of cables to the front of your case here. If you're installing them in your PC, running those cables through, sorting things out. So what you really want to do is buy yourself a triple pack, at least one box of three fans. This will make life a lot easier because this box comes with a controller which can control up to 16 fans. So it's worth bearing that in mind. So if you're building a massive case or just planning on having lots of fans in there, then this is the way to go. So you will see, obviously, we've got three 120 mil fans in there and a bunch of cables that I'll get to in a second, and then the controller. Now, this control box allows you to plug in 16 fans total. It has four different ports on it. You can see here marked one, two, three, four. And there's also two sync ports at the top, which I'll get to in a second. And you have a sticky back sticker that you can put to the back of this so you can install it on your case as well. So there's lots of nice things going on there. But what you can do is you can install up to 16 fans, four fans per group of connectors. There are alternatives. You don't have to have four fans for each one, for example. You could have three lots of three and then one single fan. I'll show you what I mean there in a second. This uses SATA power, so you need two power connectors on this to make sure that you've got enough power for the RGB and for the fan connectors and for the sync ports if you're using them. So it's worth bearing that in mind. I'll show you that in a minute. But another point of interest is you have these sync connectors at the top. You will notice that they will work with the individual RGB connector that comes from the single fan. This actually means that you can use this control box for the original AL120 fans if you wanted to. So if you're using those fans for some reason, Let's say you have a mixing and matching your Lee and Lee fans, you can do that. But you then can't plug in the power connector for those fans because there's no option there. So in the box, you get four cables. You'll notice on the left hand side, they're all tied up there and two extra ones. And I'll get to those in a second. But the four main cables are these flat connectors here. So this replaces that cable that you saw at the beginning, which has the connector on one side that goes to the fan and then two cables for RGB and fan power. So now the RGB and fan power are controlled by one single cable. You'll notice it's a flatter, fatter connector with a thin cable coming out of it. 
and a fairly straightforward logic to it now because you only have to worry about one cable instead of two and it just goes to the controller. So you plug one end of the cable into your fan and make sure obviously that you can then run that cable to the back of your case and then connect it up to the control box. And as I said, you've got four of these cables, so potentially four groups once you've got that triple pack. So you have that logic there. Obviously I've connected one fan there and then I can just connect up the other ones by clicking them into place into whatever logic you want up to a maximum of four per connector. So in this instance, I'm just gonna use three. In most cases, it's probably gonna be three. In most of the Lee and Lee cases that I've built, it's usually three. So now I've got three groups of three and I can connect those up in the same sort of logic. One cable for each of these and you can see that's the setup there. Now there may well be instances where you're using 10 fans or maybe a slightly different grouping logic. For example, what if I've got two groups of three? Maybe I've got 360 mm radiator and three fans intake, but then I'm only using two as exhaust on the top and one exhaust on the rear of the case. Well, that doesn't matter because you can still use the same sort of logic. You just could disconnect those cables and you've got connections for four cables coming out to the four different groups just in different setups. You can then control the RGB lighting and fan power from the Unleads L Connect once you've plugged everything else in. But you can see the sort of logic of how this works. Now the other thing that's interesting about these AL120 V2s is this additional cable here. This allows for daisy chaining between two groups of fans so instead of having two cables coming out of the two groups, you just have one cable that goes to the controller. So for demo purposes, I'm going to put these two groups of three together to form one group of six. So you can do this. You obviously have seen that you've got a couple of these cables. It's fairly straightforward. You can see that one cable comes out of there, loops into the other one, then the power connector comes out of the top of the other group and goes into the control box. Now it's worth noting that even if you do this, you can still only have a maximum of 16 fans on this controller, so you can't bypass the system and add in extra. So if you're going above 16 fans for some reason, you will need to purchase two controllers. And obviously, depending on the logic of your case and how many fans you're installing, you might need to buy two anyway. It really depends. Or you could just install the maximum amount that you can on here and then use RGB and fan headers, as I showed you earlier on with the single connections to add in more fans to your system. So that is plausible as well. But you can see this neatens things up a bit. So potentially you could run these front and top or something if you can work out a logic of where you can put these fans that connect to long enough that you can do this it maybe neatens things up in the case and gives you some flexibility there so the for the control box there are some other connections we need to think about one of them is a usb connection so it's a micro usb cable on one end that you plug into the controller and then that runs to the bottom of your motherboard now this cable is important because you use this to control the fan power speed and the rgb lighting and obviously the different colors and whatever else via L Connect. So you'll need this USB connection if you want to use L Connect software. So that's Lee and Lee's software. And that actually gives you the best RGB lighting and customization of these as well. So I would recommend using this and basically run that from the controller to a USB port on your motherboard. And then you'll find this other cable included with this as well, which is a tiny little connector that plugs in next to that micro USB connection. You can see this here. And this is an optional one that basically has an RGB connector on it that you'd connect up to the five volt RGB header on your motherboard. So there's two cables actually coming out of this. One is RGB header and one's fan power. It uses the same logic as those single fans that I showed you earlier on. One goes to the five volt RGB head on your motherboard and the other one goes to a PWM controllable system fan head on the motherboard. What this allows for is for you to switch into motherboard sync mode so you can sync your RGB lighting with other things connected to your motherboard and have control over it there. And you can also then control the fan speed via your motherboard software or via your BIOS rather than via L Connect. So it gives you some flexibility. You can plug in both of these connectors if you so wish, so both the USB and the RGB and system fan headers, or just the USB, or just the system fan and RGB connectors is up to you. I tend to plug in all of them because it gives you the option to then switch between those different modes when you want to. But there you go, that's the options that you have for all those different things. The next point obviously is you need to make sure you have a power connector. So here I'm using the NZXT C1200 as a demo. So this is a PSU and obviously we have various different connectors on that. You need the SATA connector. So hopefully you've got your own power supply unit. If you bought a pre-built machine, you might have a bit more difficulty, but this is the cable you're looking for. Flat connectors, 
it plugs into the SATA and peripheral connector on the power supply unit. Generally, it's the same sort of logic, the plug-in down there. These cables are used for hard disk drives, SSDs, fan controllers, RGB controllers, and such. We need one of these with two connectors on it to connect up that control box that you saw, obviously, with the triple pack. So those flat connectors that you see here, those connect up to that. If you don't do that, that control box doesn't have the power, then can't power the fans. And it's really important that it has that power because obviously you can have a lot of fans connected to it. And then the fans are set up and powered. Obviously I'm demonstrating them once again outside the case. You need to make sure you install them in your case. I've done a guide separately on the logic of how to install your fans and which way around you should face them and to get the best airflow out of them and the logic there, but you can see some of the RGB lighting here as a taster of what it looks like. You'll notice there are various accents around the very edges. It's got some really nice subtle RGB lighting on it. You've got some nice RGB on the fan blades and you can customize a lot of this within the l -Connect software too. Hopefully you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video separately, specifically on l -Connect 3. And if you have any trouble with the RGB, be sure to check out a link in the description to a video I've done separately on updating the firmware. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.